Good afternoon. The Arts Council for Monterey County welcomes you to our monthly online, online segment, Artist Spotlight. I am Karen Lee Garcia, Programs Director, and today I'm so pleased to welcome Wendy Everett, local photographer and art specialist at the Martin Luther King School for the Arts in Seaside, California. Welcome, so, welcome to our uh, monthly program. Thank you so much for being here. Thank you, Karen. Glad to be here. And I am going to read your very impressive uh, biography so everyone can learn more about who you are and why you are, I believe, such a treasure to our community. So Wendy started her teaching career in Sacramento High School at the Sacramento High School in 2003. And she taught high school level darkroom digital photography, introduction to art, art history and advanced placement studio art. While teaching at Sacramento High School, Everett coordinated partnerships with the Sacramento Bee, Sacramento City College, local art galleries, and an annual student art exhibition that engaged community artists and families. She also worked as a gallery manager and education coordinator at 40 Acres Art Gallery in Oak Park, which focused on artists of color from around the world. She coordinated lectures in partnership with local universities such as California State University of Sacramento, UC Davis, and Sacramento City College. She implemented artist residencies with local Oak Park schools in which they exhibited student art with artist ex exhibitions and even wrote grants for SMAC as well as CAC. And that's the California Arts Council. The gallery brought in artists of color such as Wraith Ringgold, Milton Bowens, Kathleen Lewis, Fly Oi Wong, Jacob Lawrence, Carrie James Marshall, DeWold Bay, which I believe I mispronounced. Oh, geez, this is a huge um, artist that you also worked in collaboration uh, with, with uh, uh, Kaheen um, Wiley. From 2008 to uh, 2015, Wendy developed and coordinated a travel scholarship for students at Sacramento High School, which provided the opportunity to travel to Rome or Paris to engage in small group PhD led walks, focusing on history, art, government, culinary and culture. Then in 2016, Wendy was hired as the art specialist for Dr. Martin Luther King Jr. School of the Arts in Seaside. The same year, the school became a partner with Turnaround Arts in the Kennedy Center. In four short years, the staff has built an incredible arts integration school and arts community for families. Wendy has coordinated the development of the community arts wing in which two local art organizations, Palenque Arts and Weston Collective, use the facilities in exchange for art services for students and families. And Wendy also set up a darkroom and teaches darkroom photography to fifth grade students in partnership. Wendy's proudest MPUSD moments were when M MLK School of the Arts photography students represented in the National Talent Show at the Kennedy Center in Washington, DC in 2018. And also when MLK School of the Arts School earned the California Exemplary Arts Education Award at Disneyland in 2020. And welcome, so welcome, Wendy. What an impressive background. And that's what I wanted to share everything with our audience because I was equally as impressed because I didn't know all of those things. So thank you so much for being here on Artist Spotlight. And we want to hear from you and learn a little bit more about your art and you know, what have you been doing since Shelter in Place? Yeah, thank you, Karen. Um, I love photography. I mean, I would say I've been doing art my whole life. Um, but I love photography. My dad used to have a Canon A1 film camera and he used to take all the pictures um, for the family. And when I got to college, he gave me that camera mm -hmm. and I loved taking pictures with it and dabbled in some classes all throughout college. And I, when I got to teach at Sacramento High School, I was so excited to be able to teach darkroom photography. Uh, and I feel like I kind of made a bougie culture of kids that, that wanted in, in the age of digital photography, immensely coming fast, uh, love doing film. Um, and then I continue to do that. I don't pick up film as much, but it is my favorite. And I teach it at uh, MLK School of the Arts. 
Um, but shelter in place, I'm currently halfway through my master's program for art education. So I'm currently like making art in shelter in place for my classes. Mm-hmm. So able to do some great watercolors, uh, some felting and fiber arts. I've been doing some editing of my travel photography and uploading some of my film stuff. So it hasn't been as much of my own personal directive, but more aligned to my master's, which is a good forced um, art time for myself. Yeah, and I'm gonna share just a couple of those images too with the audience so they can see, you know, what have you, what you have been creating during this time. I'll share my screen. You can talk through a couple of these pieces too. Sure, so some of these are my travel um, photographs. This one in particular was when I took my first Sakai students to Rome. Um, So this was film and I love taking pictures when I travel and trying to find a little bit more unique perspectives of Mm -hmm. places. And yeah, I love this piece because, you know, first of looking at it, first to know it's at the Vatican, it makes me question like, oh, maybe that's why all the stickers have been removed, <laughs> you know, where that may not happen in all in all cities. Um, but then I'm, I have questions while while I'm looking at this uh, particular piece. So this is I really love this one. And I'll move on to this, uh, this next uh, photograph. So in 2000, I was able to go spend eight weeks in the Philippines in Manila, and I took 20 rolls of film. Wow. And that was in 2000 when, when digital wasn't quite as accessible. And I, I shot all 20 or 21 rolls and brought them back and developed them uh, in a color dark room. And Mm -hmm. I thought like, even looking at this now, I think if you are privy to the difference between digital and color, you can see the range of colors that digital just can't quite get. Even though digital is really amazing, there is just richness to color film that, and the depths of the shadows and the highlights that you can't get digitally. And so Mm -hmm. I love these. Um, color prints, more travel pictures. And I just love this kind of complex image of the doll and the girls and what that just is still relevant today, right? Right. Culture in other countries. And I just think it's still a very, very powerful image. And I loved learning how to print color in darkroom because when we would send, you know, you drop off your film and Mm -hmm. get it developed, they're usually like printing the whole roll based on one image. And so as an artist being able to go in and and do those test strips and find the right color scheme for film just makes it so much stronger of an image. And I really enjoyed that when I was doing Darkroom. Yeah, this is amazing. This is moving into some of your um, more current pieces, right? That you're working on. Yeah, so this was for a watercolor class that I did over the summer, actually, and I started doing fiber arts with students last year, and I had a a wonderful local artist come in and teach the kids embroidery. Mm. What's really fun about my master's is that I'm thinking through, I'm creating my own art, but I'm also thinking about how can I take this to the kids, and so this is my dog, and I did, (laughs) I was trying to do this cross- um, uh, disciplines of watercolor, uh, uh, also with embroidery. Right. Really fun to go from a photograph to watercolor on fabric, which isn't super forgiving, but that was really fun to learn. And then adding some details with embroidery thread. Oh, mm-hmm. I love this. Love your dog. <laughs> these are, these are just so beautiful. These are the felt needle, uh, that you were working on also for your master's program? Yeah, so I had this great fiber arts. There's two mediums that I'm so excited to scaffold into my curriculum at MLK. And one is fiber arts and two is printmaking. Mm -hmm. And I've never explored felting 
it's just so interesting. And these are small little squares. I think they're like three by three. Oh, wow. They really are tiny. <laughs> tiny. And it was great to explore like the potential of how I could teach this to some of the older kids. This is a photo I took in, I want to say Casa Verde Beach. We go there a lot. As a <clears throat> and then that's Monterey in the background. Mm -hmm. Just so fun to think of needle felting as kind of drawing in a little bit more abstract way. I want to learn how to do this. This is beautiful. And you have another example. Oops. You have another example also. Yeah, that's another photo I took <clears throat> at Centennial. I think it's called Sentinel uh, at Yosemite. And it's just this beautiful 360 view. Uh, we took our kids to the top of that. And I just love this, these little tiny uh, pink flowers that were at the top of that rock and then the view of Half Dome. And then this is again, needle felting, which is really mm -hmm. cool. I thought maybe you should teach an online class on this. <laughs> That's fun, huh? Yeah. So you, you were, you know, because you were in a master's program, you had that opportunity to still, you know, be creating art during uh, shelter in place. But in your role as art specialist, we're curious, you know, how is it going? Yeah, so distance learning, this is like a whole new frontier. And I feel like it's been challenging, but beautiful. And I would love to share both of those. I mean, I think the challenges are obvious to people. The impact of switching to online learning overnight, literally overnight, for the education system was very overwhelming and daunting. And we already, MPUSD already had one-to-one -one technology for secondary students, but we didn't have one-to-one -one technology for elementary. So in a matter of a few months, you know, getting all of these 11,000 kids is Monterey Peninsula's uh, student enrollment between Monterey Seaside and Marina getting all of these kids overnight online, um, getting people access to internet. I mean, all of these oh things gosh. we just didn't see coming. Teachers going from all of this enriching environment of a classroom, uh, having students in person, you know, our school focuses on art. So we're doing arts integration in the classroom. Students are creating art in all of their big units they're doing and, the, and we use those as kind of our big assessments at the end of a unit like kids are showing what they know through tableaus like acting right and tableaus. We were doing it through the visual arts music kids were getting music every week art every week. So for that to all kind of be shifted right super challenging task. Um, the beauty of it though is really seeing how our, I'll just speak to MLK's community, is that families really worked so hard to engage in their students' learning and they were trying mm. the best they could to get their kids on and doing the work. And I think that because we've spent four years to really build this art community, that's not just about what kids do at school, but we do. 400 people is our average for our arts events. Our wow. back to school night is not a normal sit and get back to school night. It's you come and make art with your, with your student and you um, create art with them. And it gives this more open uh, way for parents to engage in the school experience that isn't so overwhelmingly academic or what your kid doesn't do or does do. Right. So I think because we had built this community of family members that experience art at our school and our kids learning art, they felt the need to make sure they carried that on. And it just was really amazing and beautiful to see parents and family members doing art with their artists. They were helping take the pictures of their art, you know, students proudly holding their art up to turn it in. Uh, how parents were working hard to make sure kids had what they need. And I Absolutely. love that our school in spring, it took us a minute, it was not an easy task, but we managed to you transition some funds that we were going to use for other things in the spring. But because we were all not on campus, uh, a leadership decision to 
purchase items for 425 art kits, which I think is that image I shared with you. Yeah, I'm going to share that right now. So you should, so you were able to prepare 425 art kits. 425 art kits. And we wanted it to be like good stuff. So there's oil mm -hmm. pastels in there, model magic, because at the end of the year, we always do a Wayne Tebow dessert theme art projects and all the kids make three-dimensional art. Mm -hmm. So, you know, we wanted to make sure they had that watercolors, um, you know, all scissors they're underneath that green things, little sketchbook, MLK sketchbook, good quality paper for the kids to make art on. And we were able to get that to all the kids and the beginning of distance learning in spring, which are some of the other images I shared with you, we had to be creative with how do we get the kids creating art with what they have at home? Right. And so there's, well, this, this is yeah. an image of you, of all the teachers really celebrating and, and uh, sharing their love for, for your students. Um, yeah, we had to be creative and we wanted to send a mm -hmm. message to them and we were all at home. We were all sheltering in place. And what I love about this, I know there's a lot of schools that did this type of photo thing, right. but you just see how artistic our teachers are. Right. I love how colorful their signs are, uh, how creative they were. And I just think this like speaks so much to how the arts isn't just about me at MLK. It's about mm -hmm. all the staff and these teachers that consider themselves artists. Right. And like you said, the parents, I really like, I'm really glad you shared the, shared the stories of how the parents were involved because, you know, that is one of the most beautiful moments with all of the challenges because the parents aren't, they may not ever see, you know, unless it's a performance day, they may not see some of those creative projects that happen in the classroom. So I know as a parent, I've been enjoying hearing my daughter tinkering on the violin for the first time and um, creating different projects. So I would never be able to see any of those things if I wasn't home with her. So those are the moments that, that, that I, I, I'm holding dear now. Yeah, that's wonderful. And so these are just a couple of other, um, just kind of moving more into the actual distance learning. And um, you share this image of a class and I, I love this image. <laughs> So these are our TK. These are four and a half year olds. And this is just like, there will never be a way to capture in a screenshot what goes into a Zoom class. Mm -hmm. <laughs> right. <laughs> That's crazy. But we made these really, every year we start out the year teaching line and how lines can make numbers and letters and shapes. And so we do these line sculptures and I really wanted to still do this uh even if we were doing distance learning and so we were able to get these little kits I cut a bunch of paper and I would have done that anyways and put them in bags and sent them home and TK families came and picked them up we also resent out art kits again this fall mm -hmm. so the TK I mean look at those fantastic little line sculptures and we were I doing love them here. And they were so proud of their art and, you know, and then they like could keep going. We were just kind of creating a lot. I was just showing them how to make a line with a piece of paper mm -hmm. and how to attach it. But they were creating all of these other layers and, and, and stacking them on top of and each other. They're, they're amazing. I mean, look at these. And I love, I love this project. I also love the, the, the parent or the teacher taking the images too. <laughs> taking a photo. Yeah. Yeah, I love this. I'm going to move on to the next image. Ooh, please talk about this series. Yeah, this. A couple of these to share. Uh, so like I said, in the spring, we didn't have stuff for kids. And I couldn't assume that 400 kids had all the same supplies to translate the curriculum over directly. And there's this just amazing community of art teachers online. And they were so willing in the spring to share ideas. There's like fate art teacher, Facebook groups, elementary, high school. Um, the art of education was doing a um, discussion, Zoom meeting once a week, just bringing people's ideas together. And this was inspired by a art teacher in, um, now I'm thinking it's Korea. 
mm. in Korea or Hong Kong, and they went shelter in place way before we did. Right. So in January, they were already kind of working through all of how to make this kind of translate and happen. And they had already done these really amazing projects. So this is the quarantine self-portrait. And this is again, where they're gonna need family to help them one, think through some of their items. This is a fifth grader. So she probably did a lot of it herself, but they're making a self-portrait of the things that they're finding to get them through shelter in place. Mm -hmm. We have another image here. This was a first grader last year. And you can see our art kit that we sent home mm-hmm. box. So she had that in her picture and one of her little paintings at the bottom. And she's wearing a ballet folklorico dress, which is just beautiful. Oh, it's such a beautiful image. And powerful too. I don't know. Just, it really, I, I don't know if you have a plan to display these. Um, these are just wonderful. I would love to, and I, I, I'm hoping that when we reopen in the spring to do a photography exhibit of mm-hmm. all of the images that the kids submitted, because they're really diverse. I'm only showing, I only shared two, but they're right. so diverse and so beautiful. Like the, the things that we don't get to see in a home, right? right. Like we don't get to see what kids have or what they value. Mm-hmm. I love that she's got like a little applesauce in there. Yeah, I know. I love the I love her food, her food choices too. Yeah. All right. Gonna head to, to this project that was also done in response to what do they have available? <laughs> yeah. And this was another one I found just online with other teacher groups. So I I did not invent this one, but it was having them do a found object color wheel. He was a kindergartner last year, so They, another thing you would need families to help with and another way for either, you know, grandma, grandpa, parents, siblings to kind of help collaborate this color wheel. And uh, I had them sort them by warm and cool colors. They sorted Mm -hmm. them in um, primary and secondary. So it was really fun for them. And then he's so proud. (laughs) I know he's so proud. And I could even feel like a little scavenger hunt, uh, you know, energy to this too, you know, just depending on how much time they had to prepare, just kind of running around the house and grabbing all the right colors and everything. Yeah. And he is, he is so proud of his color wheel. I love it. We have some more more students at home. So this is a... um, well, she's in fifth grade now, but last year, fourth grade. And this was actually not an art class assignment. It was a, an assignment for the, her actual class that her mm-hmm. teachers gave. But another great example of the collaboration and the art making and creativity that's happening at home and how, you know, siblings are getting an art experience. It's really so amazing to see that this could then create art with multiple generations or allowing for creativity in a home, which maybe people didn't have time to take to do that type of thing. And now there's these kind of guided opportunities for them to right. be multi-generational. And so we'll move to this next image. And that's another one from early spring. Another one I did not create, but it's the plate portrait. And it, the, the amazing, like so fun and creative plate portraits the kids came up with, just using anything in their kitchen. I mean, like the hair, the eyes, the face. And I definitely could tell there was an adult presence in a lot of these plate portraits, which just, (laughs) they're having a lot of fun. And I even had some kids, you know, record little videos of them making and in the kitchen, kind of cutting things up with the help of a parent or, Mm -hmm sibling or looking through their kitchen. It was really fun. Is a re- that's really, really fun. So and have you noticed any, um, you know, what has been the change from spring to now fall? Cause you know, you, you, like you said, you flipped everything, everything was flipped on its head, you know, but still art was being created and, you know, shared and creating all this beautiful um, community through, through um, the art in the spring. Anything different that you've noticed now during the fall? Yeah, I, I, I feel that I was able to be a little bit more prepared 
Hmm. In the spring, it was just kind of like, whoa, okay, let's get my bearings. What, who's doing what out there that I could potentially implement that, you know, in my situation and my students in the spring, we didn't have one-to-one technology. So there were families sharing computers. And so I think our engagement was a lot lower because if a family is sharing computers, then who's getting access? Maybe they don't have Wi-Fi. Maybe the sibling order is more priority to the older kids. But I'm really proud of uh, MPUSD because they've done a lot of things that I feel like has you know decreased the gap of learning. Mm -hmm. Who knows what the impact of distance learning will have in creating this huge gap that already exists for socioeconomic reasons for kids. But I'm really proud, like over the summer, they were able to get enough laptops. So every elementary kid then got a laptop. So now everybody has one-to-one. In the spring, they did the Wi-Fi buses at Target and San City places so people could drive up. So there's still those, but they also partnered with Redshift local internet company and making sure there's um, internet to families in Marina and Seaside and they're still working on expanding that and then you know there's a community care program where they've partnered with a few organizations to create in person in pods for our highest need homeless youth right so I don't think people know but there's 1200 homeless youth in Monterey Peninsula Unified School District. That's 1,200 kids that are homeless. We we couldn't do all of them, but like the most extreme need homeless students are now Mm -hmm. at our sites with partnered organizations, making sure they're getting online, they're getting fed, they have internet and they're being able to do school. And also doing a lot of great parent workshops for families, like how to handle anxiety and stress and Mm -hmm. how to support your kids. So there's a lot going on. They've also offered free childcare for staff that are working at the schools and teaching from school, uh, providing free childcare for them, which I think just kind of crucial. It is, and trying to identify what are these barriers for kids not learning, and then how do we do everything we can within our power to make sure that those needs are being met, and and it's still not perfect, and they're still working on it, and just an unprecedented, unpredictable time. So we definitely have- But the response, like you're saying, in PUSD's response has just been, I feel like every time I hear anything, I'm just right on target. Um, and setting, setting the tone for, you know, others to learn from too, you know, like just all the things that you just mentioned. Um, and I think it is good to hear about the different student populations and the need that is, is just present. And I think that some people just do not know. So I appreciate you bringing that information forward to, to our community here too. Um, I do want to just talking about community. We just always like to ask during artist spotlight, you know, is is there any community need or you know what's next uh, for MQSD uh, for uh, MLK School of the Arts? Yeah, I I appreciate you asking that. I it's been such a strange time, um, and you know there was early on in the summer the state was going to cut funding for public schools. And while the expectations of meeting the needs of kids during a pandemic was increasing, the funding was decreasing. So just in my world of how do we get art kits to 400 kids um, is a huge task. And I, I think what I don't really consider when I was creating a budget for my art room. So my art room sees 420 kids a week. And when I order my supplies every year, I'm I'm ordering communal supplies. Right. And I'm ordering things that could be shared, big bins of paint or, you know, art tools for each table. I'm not, I'm not ordering things for specifically one particular student or each student to have. So 
we were able to order those 400 kits, but that was seven times the budget of what I order for one year just to get those kids, those kits to have at home was <laughs> seven times wow. what I normally get. So when we think about even going into this year, we were able to use some funding, some COVID funding from the state to get some supplies and also, um, you know, the district trying to get a priority to fifth graders and their instruments and what are we um, distributing to kids so that they're creating art. But, you know, like half of my normal budget went towards more art kits because now we need more art supplies. And are we coming back in October? Are we coming back in January? <laughs> right. Do I need to order art supplies to send home for the whole year? But I need supplies when they come back. Right. So it's just been really interesting. Um, but I think any way the community would support that. And, you know, this is Monterey County Arts Council. So we're just, you know, doing the best we can over in Seaside. But I would say across the across the county, mm -hmm. this is exponentially more expensive to get kids basic art supplies. Right. Um, right. That is for every kid, not communal art supplies for a room. And then not to mention when they come back to me, whenever that is. I can't, like, I have to now create an environment in a classroom where kids are only accessing their own supplies. Right, right. It's no longer going to be a communal. Right. So I just think there's going to be this greater need for public schools and how they support their students. And when we're really focused on the arts, that's not typically the priority. Mm -hmm. I'm grateful that MPUSD has made the arts a priority for the last six years but I think about this is just more, a more expense than we ever put towards something. Right. And it's unpredictable. So there, that's, that's the, that's the call to action right there to our audience, whoever, you know, whoever's listening and we share this is that, you know, the art supplies are expensive and we have, I, I know for our own, our own programming, you know, we have to think of these things way in advance too because of shipping concerns and stock things, items in and out of stock. So that's, that's the, that is a big, you know, call to action and that we need to make sure that the students have art supplies at the, you know, in home while they're, you know, in shelter in place. And then when schools open back up too. So I appreciate, I appreciate all of the information and um, the budget information because it, it's hard for people to know until you start running those line item numbers and figuring out like, oh, this is really expensive. And we have to figure out how to make sure that all students have access to these art supplies. So I appreciate you mentioning that. And I don't know if you have anything else that you wanted to share. Um, Cause I know when I see you, we could talk for an hour. So. <laughs> Yeah, I just want to encourage people that are artists in the community. Um, how can you utilize your talents and your creativity to support kids in the community? And that could be reaching out to a local school by you and seeing if they need recorded dance lessons, or it could be maybe dropping in to teach an art class or however you feel led. But Creativity still needs to happen. And, you know, all districts and all schools are so different. So I just feel like, you know, reaching out to your local school or even nonprofit organizations that typically do in-person art stuff, like how can you help and contribute to that? Because there's so much we counted on doing in person. Yeah. Um, and, and we can't do it right now. But we all know that the arts are so important for this, for just the mental health of, of us and kids. We are immensely overwhelmed with 2020, the political climate, everything going on. If we're having a hard time handling that, then our kids are definitely with their little brains having a harder time. So just Absolutely. opportunities to be creative, read an art story, read, you know, whatever, whatever people feel like they could do just to give kids access to mm -hmm. the art. 
during this time is I think crucial. It's, it's absolutely crucial that it kids is. have those experiences. I agree. I agree. And I, and I, we started um, some, we started our art classes today in a, in a district not too far away. And, um, you know, there's always the hiccups and getting things started. But I heard back from one of our teaching artists who said, please tell all the classroom teachers and administrators that this just totally, like the second class just blew my mind. And it was so amazing. And, and I just think that was the teacher's experience, the teaching artist's experience. What was the student's experience? So I, I agree, we have to just remember that the, these children, they need us, they need our support. Um, so that's the call to the community to, you know, be in touch with, um, you know, with Wendy at uh, MLK School of the Arts, with us at the Arts Council for Monterey County. And um, we're gonna wrap up our conversation, Wendy, and I'm gonna have, you're gonna go back on vacation. <laughs> So thank you so much for joining us and um, how people can find you online. There's several ways you have an Instagram account, which is, we're gonna make sure we post everything in our Facebook feed, but it's at MLK underscore Seaside underscore arts. Um, and uh, you have a hashtag that we'll post and you're on Facebook at MLK School of the Arts. So. Thank you so much for joining us and um, appreciate your time today. And I look forward to seeing you down the road. <laughs> uh, thank you. Thanks for thinking about the work that's happening in schools and, and the arts. I really appreciate the opportunity to share and great things are happening in difficult uh, climate, but it's, it's going great. So thank yes. you. Karen. Thank you. Thank you so much. Take care. Have a great afternoon, everybody.